Blake Joseph Scalarup began his athletic journey on a New Zealand rugby pitch. When he was 10 years old, an injury sidelined him, so he gave speed skating a try and realized it was his passion and his mission. Today, Blake is one of New Zealand's proud Olympic athletes. He trains in Calgary. He competed here in the 2010 Games. It is my pleasure to welcome Blake Joseph Scalarup to Studio 4 to tell us more. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you on your way to Russia in 2014? Uh, I am on my way. It's a, it's a long journey, um, mm -hmm. two and a half years until then. So just constantly building towards that. So two and a half years till then, which means, do you have to try out again? I do. Um, you tried again in 2013, about two months before the Olympics. Really? Mm -hmm. A lot of work. It is a lot of work. Why train in Calgary? What's, what is it about Calgary and that track? Calgary has a uh, legacy from the 88 Games and mm -hmm. they establish themselves as a sort of a open training facility for people like me who don't have the resources or the expertise in their country to come train and get to that level needed to make the Olympics and be competitive on sure. the world stage. So you started out in rugby. I did. Where they bite your ears and things like that. Well, in that's, the scrum. That's a very limited case, yes. <laughs> it I is, but it happens, <laughs> it I hear happen. tell. Yes, it mm -hmm. does. Uh, yeah, I think that happened to our captain, actually, the All Blacks one year. Sure. I don't know many rugby players with uh, perfect ears. No, not many. <laughs> well, lucky you got out. Yeah, lucky. I mm -hmm. guess so. So why speed skating? Anybody in your family a skater? Not at all. Um, no. I just luck fell into the sport, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, I was playing rugby and I'd broken my arm um, rollerblading, which is a little bit funny. I was rolling down, rollerblading down a hill. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Sure. Um, and couldn't play rugby with a broken arm. My brother was like, no, oh, my friend does speed skating. You should give it a try. I think you can do it with a broken arm. And I was like, okay. And I started skating with a broken arm and I just kept skating once the arm was healed. Mm. How were you in the first time, first couple days, first week? Were you a little wobbly or uh, a did little you take wobbly. to it um, immediately? I, I took to it, but I was still, still wobbly. Mm. Um, you, you need to have very, very strong ankles and very good stability and I think yes. I, the first day I was actually there, I was uh, had a picture taken that was in the front page of the newspaper, and my feet were like this. And uh, that's not how you want to be. You want to be like this. <laughs> right. And my brother pulls that picture out and makes fun of me sometimes. And did you have an Olympic dream from the beginning, or did it come later? It came later. Um, I didn't really know it was an Olympic sport probably for about the first four years, and. Um, and then once I found out, it was sort of instantaneous, that, that dream and uh, that, that goal, really, of making the Olympics. Mm -hmm. A short track, right? Short track. And tell me, uh, for people who don't speed skate, a mm -hmm. short track, long track, the difference? Short track is, uh, is done by a 30 by 60 sort of ice hockey rink, and we have padding around the outsides mm -hmm. in case we fall. And a long track is done on a 400 meter oval. Um, a similar size to a, a running track. Right, and you, you uh, uh, compete 500? A thousand meter and fifteen hundred meters. and fifteen hundred yes. meters. Which is the most grueling? It may not be the shortest. No, no and it may not um, be the longest. It, I guess the definition of grueling. Um, they're all grueling in their mm. own way because um, the five hundred is very fast, um, and it's grueling because it's, it's quite nerve wracking to be going that fast. And then the fifteen hundred, on the other hand, is grueling physically because it's the longest mm -hmm. and it's a. Uh, quite straining. Sure, when you talk to cross-country skiers, they say it takes more guts actually to cross-country ski than it does to uh, slide down a downhill. Interesting. Interesting. Because you really have to uh, push through it. Uh, not that you don't have to have guts to go down a downhill, of course mm -hmm. you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but you have to have a lot of guts to, to go distance. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, when you decided to come out mm -hmm. post-Olympics, post-Vancouver Olympics, anything we said? No, anything no, that happened well, here? Tell me about it. Uh, it's funny. I mean, Vancouver is such an amazingly diverse and open city, and, and it was that that definitely did inspire me. Um, they had a, a, I guess, a house up in Whistler called Pride House, mm -hmm. and I'd read about that on the internet. I was like, oh, cool. I'd like to go visit there and just see what it's about. And um, they had sort of an, an art display there of... Uh, college athletes in the States who were in sports and were basically out and proud and that was just an inspiration for me um, and because the city was so accepting and very and just very open it mm -hmm. just gave me that inspiration to want to share my story because there aren't a lot of gay athletes especially at Olympic level out there. Right there probably are a lot of gay athletes who are in the Olympics they're just not out. I shouldn't say a lot 
but when you do the math. When you do the math, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, and football players and soccer players and all of the above. All of the above. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for me, I was comfortable in who I was and I was very safe in myself and in my sport. Um, and I just felt it important to share my story so that people who thought that maybe they couldn't be in sport um, and be gay at the same time that you know that you can sure. be and you can definitely make it to that highest level. But did it worry you as a young athlete that somebody would find out definitely. you were gay yeah, I was or discover? Um, yeah, I mean, because there was a lot of hiding going on. Um, mm -hmm. and, and faking. Faking, and that was the hardest part. Definitely uh, lying as well to my parents, that was quite hard. Um, and it took a toll on me as well. And once I came out to them, I felt just a lot freer and a lot open mm -hmm. with myself as well. Were they understanding? They were, they were very understanding. I mean, it wasn't really a surprise. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. But uh, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Or the dad knows, but the mother doesn't know, or the mother knows and the dad doesn't know, and uh, somebody's completely gobsmacked, yeah. you know. And, and many say, I always knew, mm -hmm. but we didn't bring it up. We didn't bring it up. Mm -hmm. So uh, did you worry about coming out before the, uh, these games, the 2010 games, because it would take the focus off you as a speed skater and put more focus on you as a, a gay speed skater? Well, I mean, I was already out to my family and friends, mm -hmm. so everybody who knew me. And, and the team me. knew. Yeah, and the team knew. Um, well, they, they knew to a point. Uh, we were sitting in the Olympic Village and um, a friend requested one of the girls on Facebook and she added me and she was going through information and she just said, are you in a relationship with a dude? And I was like, yep. And she's like, oh, cool. And well, like that, the whole new room, room knew that I had a boyfriend and there was no reaction or anything <laughs> yeah. to it. And it was, it was kind of cool in that way. Sure. Yeah. Are you in a relationship with a dude? Good question. Good question. Or perhaps a dudette. But no, it would be a dude. A dude. So they knew, were you bullied? Were you uh, harassed in, in, as a young man? As a young man, yeah, as in a, high As school. an athlete? Not so much as an athlete, not really in my sporting scene, but definitely in high school because of the sport that I did play, not being a very popular or known sport right. in my country. And then from that it just stemmed that my perceived sexuality was gay. I wasn't out. I didn't even really know that I was gay in high school. And that bullying definitely led me to believe that, that who I was mm -hmm. was wrong and there's a lot of negative words that people can throw sure. at you and it wasn't easy at all. No, so you didn't know in high school for sure. When did you know for sure? Uh, it, was, it was quite late in life, around 20, 22 I knew. Really? Mm -hmm. Because everyone's story is different as you know. Some people uh, say uh, LBGTQI, yeah. whatever the I, term I mean, is, that they knew when they were four. Yeah. And others will say, had no idea, 37, you know. When, when I say I, I didn't know, I mean, I didn't mm -hmm. have a, a certain idea. I was definitely, right. you know, feeling something different and experiencing different things. But mm -hmm. for me, that decision really, that it's sort of where the light turned on was, was quite late. Right. Why is it important that uh, athletes feel free to tell the world? And in, as you know, in some countries, if you're homosexual, you, you can be killed um, or jailed. Yeah, you can. And, uh, Obviously, it first comes down to definitely being safe. Um, for athletes, you work so long and so hard to be in your sport and mm -hmm. you don't want your sexuality, which doesn't really make up who you are any more than the color of your skin, um, to jeopardize your position in your right. sport. And so you've got to be safe, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I would think, especially in team sport, where you, I mean, imagine, well, uh, uh, Gareth Thomas, yes. Welsh rugby player, mm -hmm. out. Yes, he is. Uh, he probably took a little flack. I would say that he did, um, mm -hmm. but uh, he's very confident in himself and I guess he doesn't, doesn't take any uh, rubbish from anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. He's just strong and was a, a great role sure. model as well. What was your message? I know you gave the keynote to the uh, conference mm -hmm. yesterday, last night. Yes. What did you tell them? Well, the title... Your story. Yeah, my story. The title was My Journey to Excellence um, Through Sport. And I just shared sort of my, my journey as to how I got from, you know, a 10 year old uh, junior in speed skating to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And um, I sort of gave an, an, a definition of excellence. And sure. It was, it was very, very good. And was there a time uh, during your uh, career and ongoing career that you thought, you know, I'd rather do something else? It's a lot of work training. It is. It's, it's a lot of uh, commitment, huge dedication and sacrifice. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I've been living away from my family 
definitely from about the age of 16, I've been traveling. So it's a long time you spend away from your fr family sure. and your friends. And getting sponsors and funding, yep. not so easy. Not so easy at all. That, that, these are things that make me think, oh, maybe I should just either try something else or just go to university or get a job. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's my love and my passion for the sport that keeps me going and that, that goal that I have inside me that I want to reach. Sure. Well, nice to meet you. You too. Good luck in Russia. Thank you. Blake Scalarup, uh, Olympian.